good morning. I bring you greetings from the Great Emmanuel Baptist Church. And first, I would like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I am Sister Brenda Jennings, and I will be bringing you your Sunday School Overview for today, May the 9th. Uh, we're in Unit 3, where we're talking about the courageous prophet of change. We're talking about the prophets of change. And that's coming out of uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 29, verses 29 through 20, chapter 29, verses 13 to 24. And I'm just going to read this uh, topic, the uh, friend scripture, which is those who are wayward, meaning those who have strayed in spirit, will gain understanding. Those who complain will accept instruction. And that's from Isaiah 29, 24. That's from the NIV version. But first, I wanted to give you some little background scripture on Isaiah, who's the son of Amaz, Amos, which is with a Z, Amaz. He ministered under the reign of Uzziah, Jotham, Azai, and Hezekiah. And these were kings of Judah, Judea. And it was the year that King Uzziah died that uh, Isaiah received his calling from God for ministry. And during that vision, Isaiah responded to God's call. His question was, who will go with us? Come on. And Isaiah said, here I am, send me. Yes. A lot of times we hear that call from God and we say, here I am, send me. But we're not really ready at that time. We're, we're, we're ready to hear it, but we're not ready to be obeyed. Mm -hmm. Now, during these times, Judea's human hope for things to get right with God had died. Because they were dealing with a lot of things that they were going back on towards God. But Isaiah learned that even in times like that, the Lord was still on the throne okay. and still in control. Yes. Now, this is a long book. Isaiah is a long book, but it's a powerful book. So in your spare time, I, I, I dare you to read it. It will change your life. But it deals with two different times. It deals with the judgment mm -hmm. and the blessings of God. Okay. So let's go into this lesson. Now, this lesson is talking about empty rituals are useless. Okay, uh -huh. Now, when I first thought about this, I thought about the word empty. Empty means that there's nothing. Come on. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Empty rituals, not worship, because we are empty. What is uh -huh. empty? Empty means, it doesn't mean half full or half empty. It means empty. Amen. Come on. When something is empty, we tend to try to go fill it with something of purpose. Okay. And that's what God is trying to do in our lives. And that's what Isaiah was trying to tell the people. When we're empty, when we follow ourselves, find ourselves empty, God wants to fill us with something that's purpose. purpose. Okay. Not lip service. Now I'm going to ask this question. Does your worship match your talk? What you say? Or does your rituals match your walk? Come on, come on. Does your worship match your talk? Okay. Or does your rituals match your walk? Right. What I'm saying is, do you practice what you preach? What Are you doing what you speak? I heard this sermon a few months ago that brought me back to a place of conviction. And the question was, are we talking to God more than we're talking? Are we talking about God more than we're talking to God? Okay. Are we talking about God more than we're talking to God? Right. And I'll come back to that. Like, but I want you to look at this right here. Do not let anyone tempt you to speak wrong. Okay. We're talking about worship now. And this lesson matters because worship suffers when we fall into immortality, which is consequences. We fall into those consequences when our worship doesn't matter. Isaiah prophesied that God would punish Judea for their sin, but would still be merciful to restore the nation. Uh-huh. I'm thinking over the years of attending church when we were here, I'm going to the house of worship, meaning the church, uh -huh. anticipating powerful prayers and the choir would sing my favorite song or the pastor would preach from on high, just a powerful word, or the dancers would dance and dance around. But real worship has nothing to do with that. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come Sadly, on. many of us focus on the form of worship and not who is involved as the focus of worship. What do you say? Worshiping, which the issues is the form of all suffering and all substance. Uh -huh. You see, many of us come to be entertained. Uh -huh. uh, we instead of bringing our offerings as a reference to God, a reference to God, we come to church as a routine. 
back to that ritual. Mm -hmm. We come empty wanting the church house, the building to fill us when it has nothing to do with the church house yes, at all. Come on. With a set agenda to follow and lead the order of service, we enter empty handed, empty hearted, bringing nothing as a form of offering of ourselves to God. Uh -huh. And that's sad. Well, you ought to be mad at yourself. You had every opportunity to experience God, but you missed it. What you say? You missed it. What if that was your last time to experience God? You missed it. Yeah. Day-to-day oh, -day oh. activities of how you expect and just turn around on how you act and how you do. You turn around on Sunday morning and your battery is dead. Uh -huh. We must be charging our relationship daily uh -huh. because we do run empty. Yeah, yeah. But if you're living in a ritual type of world where it's only about routine, your relationships will become dead. Mm, so when Sunday morning comes, we are fully charged, overflowing, ready to add to what the other believers are going to say for the whole Thai worship experience. But we have to be plugged in to the source. Come yeah. on, talk, talk to us this morning. On fire with the overload of praise. Come on being plugged in throughout the week, and we expect others to do it for us. Yes. That's what called empty worship is. Mm -hmm. But we're mad at everybody else because the choir didn't sing our song, uh -huh. and the preacher didn't preach to me. That wasn't for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> but did you talk to him during the week to let him know what you needed on Sunday morning? Uh -huh. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. God is requiring us to do what's called that intimate relationship. Have that intimate relationship with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we need to be. That's where we need to be. Judea was committed to ritual type of worship. They rejected obedience to God's commandments, and they had no interest in pleasing God. Uh -huh. But they considered themselves righteous. Uh -huh. How many times do we consider ourselves worthy? Worthy. Uh -huh. And we haven't put anything in. Come on. What you say? Because we have membership. Uh -huh. Sounds like a, what do you call it? Gym membership or a club membership. I'm talking about the Christian ship, the Christian membership that, yeah. that belongs to Christ. Yeah, 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 they yeah. show up on Sundays or those special days for ritual of the Jewish faith and community. That's what they did. Uh -huh. That's what we do. Come on. The question is, are we just gathering to go through the motion for a public routine for a public sake, and there is no genuine worship to God? What you say? What you because say? that's what you did be. Uh -huh. With no committed heart, just out of habit, rules, and traditions. What you say? When real worship is about entering God's presence yes, and going into a place of a heartfelt devotion with God. Yes. That's between you and God. Yes. It has nothing to do with what everybody else has on or what they're bringing to the house of the Lord. Come on. Isaiah continued to warn them and declared that God had rejected the so-called wisdom and that God was aware of their in empty ritual. How they twisted scripture and yes. justified themselves, regarding themselves equal to God. Come on now. They had lost sight of God. It never said that God lost sight of them. Come on. They changed. God did. Uh -huh. We have to be mindful that we say that God didn't, wasn't there for me. How do you know? When was the last time you talked to him? When was the last time you asked him intimately for something? Or when did you just go to him intimately without asking for anything? Just for saying, God, I reverence you. God, I thank you. God, I adore you. That's not empty. It has nothing to do with everybody else's sin. Their worship became routine. So empty. Empty. Uh-huh. I know my granddaughter Parker, she always says, Mimi, can I have more drink? And I say, it's in your cup on the counter, because I'll leave her little cups on the counter. But she'll come back and she'll say, but it's empty. My Lord. My Lord. That means she wants me to fill it with something of substance. My Lord. Huh? Substance, something that she could use. God wants us huh? to come to him empty so he can fill us with something he can use for his glory, yeah. for his people, yeah. for his edification, yeah. yeah. not for the world. Not for the world. As a result, they forfeited so many blessings. And they faced God's bitter judgment. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many blessings do you think you forfeited? 
for not offering anything to God. Listen, when we need to see ourselves in this, you need to see yourself in it. See yourself in the scripture. See yourself. Look at the look at this story and put yourself in that situation. I have a professor at school that always says, track the story. Place yourself in the story. Place yourself in that situation and look yourself in the mirror and say, God, that, that's me. That's, and sometimes that's the hardest lie you can tell. Come on. Is to look at yourself and think, it's not me. Come on. Come on. It's not me. Yeah. What God is telling you, tell what God's about to tell him, which is in verse uh 17, it says, and I won't read, and I look, I'm, I'm reading my own notes. I won't read. It says, God had to deal with the deal. God will deal with us. Yeah, uh-huh. Isaiah prophesied that God would someday intervene to transfer to transform Judea, reversing things for their good. God is faithful. He yeah. is faithful. He's faithful. When they see among them and God among their children is the works of my hands, this is verse 23, they will keep my name holy. They will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of Jacob, and they will stand in awe of the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. God's people would not participate, not participate in true rituals with empty worship. My Lord. Uh -huh. My Lord. Because they have been transformed by God's grace. My Lord. As I think about the pandemic, I think about God. Show an Isaiah that God set us down for a whole year. And my, my thing I always tell people now is if we go back into worship the way we left, come on, come on. If we come back into the church house as the church, into the church house with the same routine, the same mindset, what have we learned in our sitting down time? Have we spent any time in God's presence asking Him, what is the purpose of this? He didn't just shut us down to shut us down. He didn't shut us down to take people out of here. He shut us down because we were acting radical outside of him. What you say? He, we were acting just like those children of Israel. We was acting just like Judea. We was acting just like them. Right. Uh -huh. And he needed to get our attention because we were basically going through the routine. We were going through the motion and doing nothing. Gaining nothing for the kingdom of God because yeah. we would go home saying, I did my part. What do you say? That is routine. That is ritual. Those are called empty rituals. Empty routines. Talk a set me. agenda on Sunday morning. We start at this time. If you don't start at this time, you're late. And if you don't, if you go over this time, you're out of order. When God says, have, when you say, God, have your way, that's no time limit on that. I've never been able to just pray and the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and I'm in tears and I'm there in the presence of God and just shut it off. Uh -huh. I, I just, I really, I've never been able to do that. Because in God's presence, in God's presence, when it's not empty, you're filled from the bottom up. You can't sit still. Your hands are moving. Your body is shaking. Yeah. Your heart is fluttering. That's not empty because you yeah. feel yourself feel being filled from the bottom to the top. That's what we need to find ourselves. So yeah. when we walk into church on Sunday mornings, when we do open the doors, we don't come in not worried about nothing, not about a seat, not about nothing, but being in the presence of God, yeah. doing absolutely nothing but seeking Him yeah. and uh -huh. His glory. Oh, what a day that's going to look like. Yeah. We give it for God and He yeah. uses us yeah. as vessels filled to the top for yeah. His glory. Yeah. But when we don't, there's judgment. There is judgment on that. We have the same opportunity that those people did, but we're letting it slide on past us uh -huh. because we're looking at the pandemic as a curse. There are blessings in this pandemic. Oh, yeah. There are times for us to get our lives right. There are times for us to get our families right. There's time for us to get our job thinking right. There's time for us to get pray, pray for those kids. Visit how that friend. When look. When it's all said and done and those things are truly taken away, all you're going to have is what you stand on for God. Yeah. And if it's empty, trust me, 
you have nothing to run on. Yeah. Have you ever ran out of gas? I've never ran out of gas, thank God. Oh, yeah. Have you ever ran out of gas and couldn't go no further? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That. that is not a good feeling. You're right not a that. good feeling when you run out of gas. You're right about the deeper the time for worship with the Lord, that's when the transformation comes. Come on. Yeah. That's the relationship. No one can counter God, encounter God through sincere worship and lead the saints. Uh -huh. You cannot. You can come in mad on Sunday morning but still feel because you're hurting behind something, you're grieving behind something. But I promise you, if you come in feel and God fill you to the top, you will be transformed in some type of way. You may still be hurting or grieving or whatever, but God is going to fill that place of void. Yeah. He will fill that place yeah. of void. And yeah. Isaiah was trying to tell them, a day is going to come when you're going to have to stand before God and he's going to judge you on those things that you have done and said. Uh -huh. But yes, his mercy yes, endures forever. Yeah. His mercy, not your friends, because my circle is small, not your friends, his mercy endures forever. His mercy. You can't go before God and not be changed. Sincerely, with a heart, with no motives. I'm talking about zero motives whatsoever. Not because you need something, want something, want it. Go to God sincerely with no motives. Uh -huh. yeah. I heard this sermon a couple of months ago in Valley Revelations. I listened to Stephanie uh, I keep It's spelled like Ike. It's Ike, and she's powerful. And I heard this message, and it convicted me. It was in the book of Revelations. And as I was studying this lesson, I thought, God was talking to Isaiah about transforming these people or whatever, but he also talked to the church, the seven churches in Revelation. Uh -huh. right. And I asked the question today, which church are you? Which church? Because he started out talking to the church in Ephesus. And he talked to those seven churches in the book of Revelation in uh, chapter 2. But verse 1 through 7, if, if, if we're back to the message, uh, he said, uh, Jesus condemned the Ephesians, or he commends them, I'm sorry, he commends them for their good works uh -huh. and their hard work and for their testing and teaching uh -huh. to, uh, and how he, they tested the people that were speaking falsely. They knew, they knew of God. And the people were speaking falsely, they, talk, they called them on them. Uh -huh. And sometimes we, we don't even call people on when they're saying something wrong about God because we don't know ourselves. What do you say? But God... But, but, but Jesus commended these Ephesians in the church of Ephesus. He commended them for their good works and for calling out those and testing those teachers who were doing this, whatever. And uh, they, he, uh, he did that. But then he went back. He said, uh, y'all had lost your zeal. He also commanded, condemned them because they had lost their zeal for Christ. What do you say? This same church who was doing these great things. And we see ourselves as a great beacon of light on this hill that we already say of doing great things. Uh -huh. But what, God, what is God going to say about great events? What you say? You did good works. You 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 you, wore, you you drove out the false teaching and all this stuff. But you lost your zeal for me. Yeah. You have lost your desire for your first love. I'm not talking about your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You know how I, I remember so that vividly how I felt when I first accepted Christ for the first, when I really understood All right. how how happy I was and how happy I was to come to church. And after a while, that started going down, and that was because of people. Come on, yeah. people. Talk to us. And sometimes people can do that. And at that time, being young in Christ, I didn't know that I had that direct relationship to God to go to him and tell him about these people. This 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 art, this music art, uh, uh, Brother has this song called People, Deliver Me From People. But God, deliver me if I'm one of those people. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. People. People will tear you down. But have you lost your zeal for God? Uh -huh. Have you lost your love for God? Yeah. Says, they lost the warmth and zeal for God and to be, begin to go back to going through the motion of the good works motivated by not love, but greed and of themselves. Uh -huh. The relationship that they once had had now come to a religion. Mm. Not a 
relationship, it was empty. It's funny how all of them begin with R. Rituals, religion, relation, yeah. uh -huh. revelation. Yeah. It's amazing how he waited to, to, to the book of the Bible ended in Revelation to come back to this story when Isaiah is kind of like printed in the middle of the book. Come on, uh -huh. come on. See, if you don't read on through the Bible in, in that relationship and ask God to start revealing some things, because he revealed some things to Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah didn't fret. Come on. Uh -huh. He wasn't wary. He was, he was concerned about the people. Yeah. Yeah. But he wasn't worried. Yeah. He wasn't worried about that. If we are the church, and he wrote to the seven churches back then, and we, the body of believers, are the church, and Christ is the bridegroom, who is he going to come back for if we act in foolish? What you say? Come on. Who does the Because, I mean, when you're getting married, the bridegroom is coming down to the bride. Uh -huh. But if you're there empty with nothing and you've lost your love for me, yeah. why get married? Come on. Why be in a relationship? Come on. Speak. Why? Speak. We're asking God to do something that we're not doing. Ooh. We're asking God to have a relationship to bless us, to give us things, to have show mercy upon us, to heal us, to provide. He's asking to do all these things, but we won't go to him. Amen. Amen. We have, he said, we have 60 seconds in a minute. I forgot. Yeah, 60 seconds in a minute. Uh, 60 minutes. Yeah, and all that. that, that Y'all know what I mean. See, I'm smart. Yeah, that. But I'm saying we have all those empty seconds and minutes and hours and months and years to spend time with God. Yeah. How would it be to stand before God on judgment and he said, out of all time on earth, is this all you did with your time? Come on now. Yeah. Or if you stand, you stand before judgment and he said, I don't know you. Come on now. What? What? Come on. And you say, well, God, I did all the good works. Come on now. I did all the good things. I, I, I spoke to the people. I, I worked with the ministry. I did all these things. He said, but you didn't have a relationship with me. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You didn't have a relationship with me. Uh, amen. I stand here today to tell you, out of all relationships you can have in this world, Come on no matter how much you love your spouse, Come your children, now. your friends, uh -huh. the church, if you don't have a relationship with God, yeah. you're empty. Yeah. 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 And you're going to find yourself sinking to the pit of hell. Yeah. And even if you make it to the to 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 to, uh, to heaven, your reward. Mm. You know, yes. Why stand before God empty? Yeah. Just standing on the faith that you accepted Him, not doing nothing for the kingdom. Thanks. How can you feel proud about that? The Savior who died for us. Oh, yeah. oh, How do you God. feel proud to be empty when you have a God that's merciful to give? He doesn't ask much. He doesn't ask much. But he does want that relationship. Yeah. And that's something you can't get from your friends. Come your mama on. can't get it for you. Come they on. can pray for you that you get it. Because I pray for my children and my grandchildren and my friends. But they can't go to God for you. Yeah. 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 They cannot go to God for you. Because behind every mask is a hurt soul. Amen. A Amen. hurt soul. Amen. And if we don't start being a beacon of light, being a vessel that God can use to show others that it's not about the building. I know we're hurting to get back into this building, but if you're not the church, yeah. you don't need to come to the building. Right. I right. say go to God and let him give you what you need to be able to help fill the people. Yeah. We need to be filled with those who are seeking to learn about Christ. I'm not saying don't come if you're not saved. I'm saying go to God while you've got time at home and seek him for yourself. Yes. And he can show you how to be when you come among other Christians and believers. Yes, sir. And I'm saying to Christians, we don't have it right. Amen. I'm saying our day to day should be at a place where we're seeking to please God every single day. Every single day. As much time as we're on social media, and on the phone, what we do for our jobs, what are we doing for Christ? Yeah. 
what will, what will our children and grandchildren say? What would, what would they what would, where would they be if it came to a point where mama's not here anymore? Yeah. Have you taught them to pray? Uh -huh. Have you taught them to go before the throne? Yeah. And that's what Isaiah was telling the people. God is going to judge you on the way that you're acting. Amen. But he's a merciful God. Yes, he is. But you got to seek him for yourself. Yes. You got to trust him for yourself. Yes. You got to know that he is the only way. Yes. You can't go through this and you can't go through that. You can't maneuver yourself. The, it's straight. Yes. It's straight to him. Yes. When you start wavering, like he said, those who are wavering in spirit will gain understanding. I mean, when you're when you when you out to the side and you're doing the wrong way, God can bring you back. Yeah. He will bring you back. Thank you, Lord. Those yeah. who complain will accept Thank you, Lord. Yeah. instruction. Uh -huh. That means that God, that's mercy. Yeah. Yeah. That's mercy. Yeah. Because we've all strayed. We've all fallen short. Yeah. But God has kept his hand on us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We moved. He didn't. That's it. We moved. That's it. God didn't move. That's it. So as I come to a close, I just want you to know that in all the things that's going on in life, know that God is still able. Yeah. And that God is on the throne. He is in control. Not this pandemic. Not who's in office. Yeah. God is in control. And he knows what's going on. He knows about your need. He uh -huh. knows about your concern. But just like the children of Judea, God will, he will condemn those in the wrong, but he will show mercy. He has mercy, but we have to seek it. Don't come into the house of God empty, come just on. reaching. Think about your time that you're at home before you come back to the house of the Lord. Come Think on, about man. the time that God has sent you down. Yep. Spend some time with God. Spend some time with God. Let's pray. Right. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to stand before those to just to uh, speak your word, dear God. Lord, I come to you, Lord, saying, thinking that something I may have said or something that they may have read, God, that would be able to fill their lives, God. They may go on a little bit further seeking you to fill them day to day, dear God. Lord, we come right now as empty vessels, Lord, asking you to fill us from our feet down to the top of our heads, Lord, that we may be able to be uh, vessels for your glory, dear God, not for ourselves, God. Lord, as we go on into this worship service, dear God, I pray, Lord, that someone might hear your word and hear your calling and be saved, Lord, by something that is said or done. Make, let a heart be pricked. Let a heart be softened. Soften our ears, dear God. Amen. Let us hear from you, God, on today, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, God. We count it, we don't count it, Lord, as in vain, dear God. We pray that you get all the glory and all the things that we say, things that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Amen.
we want to thank Brother Chief for leading us in that opening time of, of worship. And we want to thank all of you for your presence today. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. You know, a daughter was talking to her mother and said, Mom, what is it like to have the world's greatest daughter? And the mother said, I don't know. Ask your grandmother. <laughs> then there was a son who was talking to his mother who was a computer specialist. And, and the son asked his mother, Mom, why are computers so smart? And mother said, because they listen to their motherboard. <laughs> you get, you, get, you, get you get that one on the way home. This morning, in reference to Mother's Day, I'm, I'm going to read a passage of scripture from the uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 34. I'm just, just going to read verse 10, then I'm going to skip over to verse 28 to, to 31. And, you, and, and it, it says, who can find a virtuous wife? Which, well, you can also put virtuous mother. Who can find a virtuous mother? For her worth is far above rubies. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman, a mother, who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gate. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of the most holy word. Would you join me in a moment of prayer at this time, please? Most gracious Father in heaven, it's once again that we come into your presence with thanksgiving in our heart. But before we, we begin this worship, Father, we, we just have to go back and get something right at the beginning. Because, Father, we have been challenged this morning to examine our worship. Come on. And, Father, as we come into your presence this day, yeah. we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will examine our hearts. Yeah. And, 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 and if our intent, if our purpose is not fully on you, we pray the Holy Spirit will do a work in our yeah. hearts. Yeah. And we pray, Father, that you remove all the distractions about what we're going to do with mama this day or what we're going to do at work tomorrow and help us to focus our thoughts and our hearts directly on you. That our worship and our praise will be what you require in spirit and in truth. And Father, prepare our hearts for worship today so that we might give you the praise and glory that you so richly deserve. And this morning, Father, we just have thanksgiving in our hearts, Father. Thank you for sparing our lives and letting us live to see this new day, this Mother's Day. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us our reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you for providing for our needs, guiding us over the dangerous streets and highways, and allowing us to make it to this house of worship to spend this time prayer with you. And we just want to say thank you, Father. But most of all, Father, we want to thank you today for your greatest expression of love and kindness in that while we were yet sinners, you sent your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross to pay for our sins. And you raised him from the dead so that we might have life eternal through his name. And we just worship you today. But Father, please we pray a selfish prayer we pray for those in our family who are sick and suffering right now. We pray your healing hand will be upon them. We pray for those who don't have their mothers with them right now. Maybe on last year at this time, their mother was with them. But right now, this year, they celebrate Mother's Day without their mother. I mean, it's been a while, but yet their hearts are heavy with grief over the loss of their mother or their love in the general. Be their comfort, be their strength right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. And just remember all of us in every various trials and afflictions. Do your perfect work in every situation, every circumstance, according to your will and for your great glory. Then pour out your spirit on this service. Anoint everything that we do. Anoint the worship singing and touch the man of God who's going to stand behind this sacred desk and preach your word. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. Anoint him with your power from above. Heaven to brightly divide and preach your uncompromising word, your everlasting gospel. Then bless your word as it goes forth, Father. Don't let it come back, Lord. But let it 
make sure that we're in the presence of this, of our God. Because that's who it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about Reverend Jackson. It's not about Sister Jim. It's all about God.
today. Yeah. And above him there is no other. Yeah. Because Jesus, Jesus is the way. Get there. 
Once again, we have our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ standing up and having the mitigated gall to say, if you want to be happy, Come on, be if you want to be blessed, yes, you got to go through me. Yes, I, I invite you to open your Bibles to the 10th chapter of the Gospel, once again, as recorded by the Apostle John. And I want you to look with me at verses 7, 8, 9, and verse 10. Now, I will be reading from the New King James Version of the text. But you read from whatever version you feel most comfortable with, because it's, it's essentially going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to invite those of you that at home watching it virtually, would you stand at home in reverence to the speaking of God's word as well as those who are in the sanctuary? You're not standing for me. You're standing in reverence of the reading of the word of God. John chapter 10, beginning at verse 7, you will find these words recorded. Then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9 says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and find pastures. This day for a moment, thank you very much, you may be seated. Thank you so, uh, this moment, I just want to talk to you about I am the door. I believe in the King James Version, it uses the word gate. But it's speaking about the same thing. Something that allows you access or exit from a structure. Now, we are in a series of messages where, where Jesus is declaring something exclusively about himself. We saw how, how Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. And now he's going to have the immediate gall to talk about I am the door. You see, chapter 10 comes after the incident in chapter 9, where as Jesus was leaving the temple complex, he came across a man who had been blind from birth. And, 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 and the disciples asked him, Lord, who messed up? Who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it his parents or did he do something? But Jesus said, neither. But this man was blind so that I could perform the works of God. So God, so Jesus spat on the ground, made clay, north the man's eyes, and sent the man to the pool of Siloam to watch his eyes. And when he did that, he came back seeing. And everyone kept well, asking, how did you receive your sight? So they took him to the religious leaders. And the, and the religious leaders began to question and examine him. And he said, I don't know, but a man just spat on the ground, made clay, anointed my eyes, told me to watch, and I'm seeing. And they said, tell us about this man. And then as they as he began to describe this man, they realized, uh-oh, it's that Jesus guy again. Oh. And he's breaking, what's this in it says, our rituals, what's that word, rituals? He's breaking one of our rituals. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's healing on the Sabbath day. Oh. He know better than that. Oh, but the man says, I don't know if he's, if he's a sinner or not. All I can tell you is that once I was blind, but now I see. And, 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 and so, so they got mad at him and they kicked the man out of the synagogue. 
And Jesus found the man and asked him, do you believe in the Christ? And he said, who is he, Lord? He said, I one that's speaking to you, I'm he. And he began to worship him. And Jesus said, for this cause I came into this world, that, that those who see might be made blind, and those who blind might be made see. And the group of Pharisees were standing by said, that, hey, are you talking about us? You talking about us? And, and, and Jesus, said, Jesus said, if you guys were truly blind, you wouldn't have no sin. But because you claim to see, your sin remains. And that leads us to chapter 10, where Jesus is, is, is going to be talking about false leadership. The, and, and showing the people who the true leaders are. And he's going to use the analogies of, of sheep, shepherd, and the doorkeeper. Okay. And in our first verses, he's talked about, you know, uh, the sheep enter in by the door, and, 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 the, and the doorkeeper keeps them. And then when, when the owner of the sheep comes, the doorkeeper op opens the door and, and lets him get to his sheep. But he says, anybody else who comes in any other way is nothing but a thief and a robber. And he says, the sheep won't follow them. Because, because and, I, and I'll talk more about this when our next talk yes. about Jesus and the Good Shepherd. You see, sheep can be trained to only respond to their master's right. voice. Come on. And, 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 and the stranger, they will not follow him. But, but, but Jesus is, is, is using this analogy to really talk about true leadership. Okay. And these guys didn't get the point. So in our text today, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, the three things I want to talk about real quick, and, and, and then we all can get out here and go celebrate Mother's Day. Okay. First point I want to talk about, Jesus, the only door. Okay. Now, we talked about this, and, 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 and I know you probably get tired of hearing about the ego in me of Jesus. That whenever Jesus says ego in me, what follows after that, Jesus is saying that I and I alone am this. And in this occasion, he, he's saying that I and I alone am the door to the sheepfold. In other words, the only way you're going to get to the sheep, you got to get through me. Now, 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 in, in ancient Bible times, sometimes the, when, the, when, when the shepherd couldn't get his sheep into town, to the sheep pen, he would find maybe a cave or, or, or a canyon where, where he could put his sheep in, and then he would lie down in front of the entrance. Yeah. He would be the door. And said that if you want to get to my sheep, you got to get through me. And so when Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep, Jesus said, no one can get to my sheep except they go through me. Now, who is this sheep he's talking about? He is not talking about humanity. Because, because while all human beings come from God. Okay. Not all human beings belong to God. Lord. Listen to Psalm 100 and verse 3 where it says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Come on. And, 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 and so, David clearly understood that if you belong to God, you're one of his sheep. Okay. And if you're one of his sheep, then, 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 then you belong to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus is the door that protects you from all those who would harm you. My Lord. My Lord. <clears throat> but when we talk about the door that Jesus is gaining us access to, okay. we have to remember 
that when Adam sinned, he caused all mankind to go astray from God. Oh. Isaiah 53 and 6, A says, All we like sheep have gone astray. Yeah. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord laid the iniquities on his son. In other words, ever since Adam sinned, people have been looking for the way to find happiness. Amen. To find that sense of well-being. Yeah. To find that sense of joy. And Jesus says, if you want to find happiness, you have to go through me because I am the door of the sheep. And, and if, if you belong to God and you have no peace in your heart right now, you have no joy in your life right now, you need to go through Jesus. You won't, you won't find it anywhere else. Because not only is Jesus the only door, but Jesus is the real door. But look again with me at verse 8. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now, this is where, this is where, where Jesus is denouncing the religious leaders. And, 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 and in the Greek, the word before is pro. Okay. Now, normally we think pro means before in the sense of time and space. You know, someone is standing before me in, in, the, in line at a checkout counter. A checkout counter, that's time and space. But, but, but you see, this, this before can also mean before of another kind. Someone that came before someone else claiming to be that person. So when Jesus says, all who came before me are nothing but thieves and robbers, he's saying that all these false messiahs, all these people claiming to be Christ, were nothing really but thieves and robbers who had no desire to do anything for the sheep, but they only wanted to get what they out of the sheep. All right. Listen to Matthew 24 and 5 says, but Jesus said, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Yeah. Then he repeats the same thing in verse 24 of that same chapter, for false Christ and false prophets will rise and, and show great signs and wonders to deceive as possible, even the elect. And even in our day and time, we have seen this words of Jesus come true. That's right. How many of you heard of Jim Jones? That's right. That's right. That's right. And how many people he led to their death? Yeah. How, how, how many of you remember the David Koresh's? Yeah. And how many people he led to their death? Yeah. Jesus said, Jesus said, you're going to always have these folk jumping up and saying, you want to find happiness? You want to find joy? You come through me. But Jesus says that if, that, that if they're not me, then they're nothing but a thief and a robber. But you see, the wonderful thing about this is, is that if you truly belong to Jesus, you can never, ever be truly deceived by these false messiahs. Because 1 John 2.20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You see, when you, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, even though you are a baby Christian, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, and, and you, have, you have a false Messiah, a long system in you that's built inside of you that goes off and says, There's something not right about this guy. That's not something not right about this person and what they're saying. So, so, so if you ever get this seed, what does this Brenda say? It's your fault. Because <laughs> you let yourself get this seed. But Jesus says, those who truly belong to me, even though they, they have all these guys claiming, said, hey, follow me, join my church, 
Join my ministry. Join my group, and I'll lead you to the to to, to the to the path of happiness. There's something inside you that says, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not it." There's something inside you that says, "Jesus is the only door to happiness." That that if if I want to be happy, if I want to be blessed, if I want to be well off, I've got to go through Jesus. So not only Jesus, the only door. Not only is Jesus, you know, the re the real door, but guess what? Uh-huh. And I'm almost done. I'm almost out of here. Hopefully you're not getting sleepy because if you bow your head and look up, I'll be sitting down. But, but <laughs> Jesus is the right door. Yeah. Okay, look, look at me. I'm still working with the text. Pastor, I'm still working with the text. I know you're looking down. I'm still working with the text. <laughs> that, man, that man's still watching me. But what you doing, my people? Okay, verse 9 says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and find pastors. Now, many of you, or some of you, probably most of all of you, know about this popular game show called Let's Make a Deal. Okay, okay. In, in, in fact, I think our own uh, Reverend Billy Williams were was was on that show. Right, right. You know, he was on uh what's the other one? Uh right. Price is right. right. Then they went over to the next studio they they were part of that. But he didn't get selected, I think his cousin did yeah. or someone like that. Anyway, you know the, the, the premise of the show is that the host offers people different things and he tries to deal with them something better. He might he might ask you to stand up and say, here's a thousand dollars. Now now I tell you what you can either keep the thousand dollars, or you can have what's behind door number one, on. or you can have what's behind door number two, Come on. or you can have what's behind door number three. Come on. And, 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 and you see, then it becomes your responsibility to choose the right door. Yeah. And, and if you choose, you give up that thousand dollars and you choose the wrong door, it may open up another billy door behind it. But, but, but you see, the good news is yeah. that, that when you choose to give your life to Jesus, you've already chosen the right door. Right. Because Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone's entered by me, he will be saved. You will choose that door that leads to, to forgiveness of sins and, and, and life eternal yeah. in yeah. his name. You will receive salvation. Yeah. You'll never go through the door of Jesus and pick the wrong door. Yeah. If you choose Jesus, you'll choose the right the right door. Yeah. And, 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 and notice what, what, what Jesus said. Only through Jesus can you enter into salvation. Jesus declared the same message that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this in this series. In John chapter 14, 6, you know what it says. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to, if you if you're looking at all these doors out there and all these doors saying, go through me and, and you will have life eternal. In fact, I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading I'm reading a book right now in preparation. Hopefully they, they'll, they'll give me this assignment. But it's always good to be prepared. I'm reading a book on world religion because I'm hoping that there, somebody will hire me to teach world religion. But I'm reading through this book right now and I'm reading about all these different religions and all these different religions saying, if you want to have life, if you want to have happiness, if you want to have joy, come through me. But but Jesus says if you really want to have true joy, true happiness, true peace, true victory, true success, I am the door. You got to come through me. Because Acts 4.12 says there is no other name under heaven given by men by which we must be saved than the precious name of Jesus. So, 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 so Jesus says if you come to me, you will be saved. But here, here's a sweet part of the deal. Look at that last part of verse 9. And we'll go in and out and find pastors. Now, now, now well, but what Jesus is not saying, he's not saying you come into him, then you go out from him. 
When he says go in and come out, he's saying that, that when you come through him, you have a you have an open pasture land where you can roam all over the pasture land. And wherever you roam, you're gonna find green grass, fresh steel water to drink, everything that you want, no matter where you roam in my pasture. So 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 if you want to have happiness, Jesus is the only door. Jesus is the real door, and Jesus is the right door. Because you see, only Jesus Christ went to a hill called Calvary. Only Jesus Christ had a crown of thorns pressed upon his brow. Only Jesus Christ had his hands and feet nailed to that cross. Only Jesus Christ suffered and shed his blood to save our soul. And only Jesus Christ got up three days later with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. It was only Jesus. So if you today said, my life is so miserable. I'm so depressed. I'm so lonely. I'm so empty. I wish I could find happiness. I wish I could find joy. I wish I could find peace. Jesus says, I am the door. You come in through me. You'll not only be saved, but you'll be able to go around and find everything that you always want. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But it's only through Jesus. Yes. It's only through Jesus. Yes. So my brothers and sisters, don't let these other things deceive you. There's only one way to find happiness. There's only one way to find peace and joy. It's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. My sister Brenda already gave my invitation, so I'm just going to pick it back on that. <laughs> See, we're going to get out here early thanks to her. She did most of the work. But If you find yourself empty in your life, if you find yourself lonely, if you find yourself unfulfilled, you need a relationship with Jesus. I, I, I told you this sometime before that in my teaching, students from all over the world that when we come to the discussion of the existence of God, that's when I find out where all my students are. I find out those who believe in Jesus. And I find out those who don't believe in Jesus. And I even find out those who just don't know but one thing that I've discovered that those who don't know Jesus Christ, they have, they have written me some very sad and depressing papers. Because they talk about how empty their lives are and, 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 and how they, some have gotten into all kinds of stuff searching for happiness. But see, as a, as a public I can't say anything to them. All I can pray for. But I, I can talk to you right now. If you today you find your life empty, void, seem like you're just going in circles, seem like there's no purpose to living, every day is just a, what's that word, ritual, empty ritual? I, I can't tell you, what empty ritual? The same old, same old all the time. What you need is a relationship with Jesus Christ. What you need is coming through Jesus Christ through faith in his name and believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sin. And your life will have meaning. Your life will have purpose. So this day, as we extend this invitation to discipleship, I want to examine, I want to challenge each and one of you and ask you this question. Are you happy right now? I know you might be going through stuff, but Jesus Christ said, my peace 
for volunteering to be on the list now. So we, we, I'll talk to the superintendent. We see where we can drop you in again sometime soon, so you can you can you can you can bless all of our hearts again. But also, we, 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 we're always mindful of, of those of you who continuously, faithfully support our church through your tithes and offerings. Some of you bring it down yourself. Some of you drop it in the mail. Some of it we come and get it, which we don't mind. And then those of you who use our Givelify app to send your offerings in. We just want to say thank you so much. And if you allow me, before we have our closing remarks and benediction, would you allow me to just pray God's blessings upon you for your giving? Would you bow just briefly for me? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much, Father, for those who faithfully, continuously, even in the pandemic, to support your church, your work, with their tithes and offerings. We pray that you will bless them for their faithfulness and their giving. We pray that you will bless these offerings that were given. Use them for the work that you have called us to do as a local body of Christ here in this city for your glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, Reverend Williams is going to come and share something with us. And then, uh, you go ahead and give the closing benediction while you come. Everyone say amen. amen. Truly, we are thankful to be in the house of the Lord to share this second Sunday, amen, amen of May. And we thank our presenter for Sunday School. Amen. Wonderful job. And we thank this dynamic preacher who always provokes thought in his message, and we are yet concerned with our own lives after hearing it. Amen? So we thank each of our members for your support and all that you've done, but we do have just a couple of announcements by way of um, uh, things that are happening at our church. Thank you to Brother Jennings and the deacons for uh, steering everything that happens. We do want to get together as a church but one, before we make the announcement, we want to keep in mind that we must practice social distancing no matter what we do for the protection of our ministry, for the protection of our members, and for the protection of our church. Anything we do, we must do it socially distanced. That means that we know that you'd like to fellowship, we know that you'd like to get together, but we want to do it in a safe manner so that we can come down to our church fellowship and still live a whole life at home. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. With that being said, what we're going to do on the first Sunday in June, which is June the 6th, we're going to have our first social distancing service on the parking lot of our church. Amen? Yeah. Now, in this parking lot service, we're going to respect boundaries, that six-feet rule, but we're also going to give you the option of staying in your car. We'll park your car in a place in which you can enjoy service together, fellowship, and give those air hugs from your seat. Amen. Amen. And we'll probably have some seats outside that are socially distanced. So mark it on your calendar. We are headlining this as back to the basics. Amen. Corporate fellowship. So we're looking forward. Our men will lead out and take part in helping us put this together, safely get us on the parking lot, and then safely get us home. Amen. So please, please, please look forward to announcements coming this way. But it's also going to be a time of us inviting all of our members back so that we can see your face. Amen. We have missed your face. We have missed seeing you. And we want to see you here on our parking lot service. This will be one. We are making plans to have a soft intro into our building just to make sure we're ready to do that. Amen. But as a highlight, in order to get us not just physically ready, uh, spiritually ready, on this Wednesday, we'll have our first Bible study setting, video by video. So at 7 p.m., we will go on Facebook with our first Bible study. So join us on our Great Emmanuel page so that you can be there to celebrate what God is doing in the life of our church on Wednesday night. Can I have you do that for us? Amen? Amen. So on Wednesday night... Ask somebody to join you on Facebook for our Wednesday night service, but also uh, on the first Sunday in June, ask someone to join you here on the parking lot of our church that we might fellowship together. Amen. amen. It's going to be some old time singing. Y'all know I love some singing. Amen. amen. It's going to be some old time preaching 
and it's going to be some new age fellowship. So we are looking forward to getting back to the basics where we worship the God that he has been for so many years. Amen. God bless you. May he keep you is our prayer. If there is nothing else, let's go. Let the church say amen. 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 They'll get it. Amen. Amen. True believers say so much to be thankful for because when we look over our lives, we realize that you have been good to us in spite of what Satan has thrown our way. Father, we stand here at this moment in time giving you praise for the God that you've been in our, through death you've been good to us, through, through pain and sorrow you've been good to us, through separation you've been good to us. And Father, before we do anything else, we just give you praise for all that you've done in our lives. But not only that, Father, as our steps move forward, as our hours roll on, we're going to continue to give you glory because no matter what happens in our lives, the God that we serve is yet in control. Father, endow us with your word that we might be mindful of what you called us to do. That whoever we come in contact with, we would let them know that the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God yeah. is eternal life. Put your word in our mouth that the world might hear through us that God yet lives and is on the throne. Father, bless our congregation. Bless those in the sanctuary and those joining us by video. Touch now in the name of Jesus that they may find themselves in right relationship with thee. Touch the staff, the leadership, and the members of this church. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And together we say, Amen. Amen.